How sweet it is to have simple syrup that's sugar free. Hey y'all, it's Lindsay. It is definitely fall and pushing into Christmas. So I want to have yummy drinks that are a little bit more seasonally appropriate. So I am going to put together some simple syrups that I can then flavor with a variety of extracts to add to various warm beverages, whether they be a low carb friendly hot chocolate or some sort of a steamer, which is more of just like a flavored hot milk or milk alternative as we tend to use on the low carb lifestyles. Um, or, you know, those latte type recipes. If you're new here, welcome. I do love to share recipe videos, what I eat in a day videos. I also will share a grocery haul every now and again. Whole variety of things happen here on my channel related to my health and wellness experience. I would love for you to poke around my channel and consider subscribing and hanging around for a while. To my returning viewers, I appreciate you being here today. We'll start with that simple syrup and then move on to the flavor options that I have for you today. I have my ingredients over here at my stove. We're gonna be using one cup of water. I prefer to use a filtered water. We have a reverse osmosis system, so it's good quality water, but use what you have. And then I'm going to use an equal amount of allulose. So I'm going to use one cup of allulose. I'm going to add the tiniest little pinch of Redmond salt, the real salt, and I'm going to whisk this together. I have to balance on this soap. And I'm going to turn that to about a three to just start working on dissolving my allulose. Oftentimes with these sugarless or sugar-free options, they don't the, the sugar-free options don't tend to behave exactly the same way as sucrose. So you kind of have to manipulate the ingredients a little bit more in order to achieve a similar outcome. And I don't want to boil away all my water. I want to be able to have a good volume of allulose syrup once I'm done with this. And one of the ways that we can do that is with a thickening agent. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of acacia fiber to my mixture in order to aid the thickening with this syrup. Get that set up. Boop. So what I think I'm going to do is use about one quarter teaspoon of my acacia fiber. Alternatively, you could use xanthan gum or glucomannan powder. Both of those will work as well. If you are looking for an option that is not plant-based, you could try a very small amount of gelatin, being aware that once you stick that in the fridge, if you've used too much, it's going to become actual jello. I am going to hang out with my sauce pot here for a little while and allow my syrup to get thicker. I don't want to lose too much volume, but I do want it to become syrupy. It will thicken as it cools, so I'm going to keep that in mind. I don't want to wind up with something that's super gelatinous at the end. I am keeping my stove on a pretty low medium type heat out of a scale of zero to 10. It would be about a three on the dial. It's a little bit trickier with a gas stove, I think, than an electric stove to keep that heat kind of like really where you want it in that sweet spot. So I am having to babysit this a little bit more than I think I would on a different type of stove, but this is what I have. 
So my syrup is simmering away back here on the stove. It's on a very low heat, which is good. I am planning to make a sugar cookie flavor. I mean, it's not gonna be a real sugar cookie. However, it will be reminiscent. It will be sugar cookie adjacent, if you will. And that will be mighty fine in a steamer, which is just like a hot milk kind of beverage that's not actual hot chocolate, but it's also not a latte because it doesn't have coffee in it so it'll be fabulous as a sugar cookie steamer but then i'm thinking i will make an amaretto flavored syrup my husband has been craving the tiramisu and i thought that by putting together an amaretto syrup i could make a tiramisu latte that would tide him over until i can make a low carb friendly version of tiramisu so Here's to hoping. I'm pretty pleased with how this is turning out. It has reduced slightly, and I am going to go ahead and turn off my burner, and we're gonna set this aside to cool for a few minutes while I pull out my extracts to make my flavors. This has been cooling for a few minutes. I am actually going to go ahead and pour it from my saucepan back into this Pyrex so I can kind of measure it out. I'm trying to make two equal volumes of syrup, so I need to know how much I have left in my actual saucepan here. Excellent. Roughly one cup. So I'm gonna pour about half of that back in there, and I'm going to flavor each one separately. We have our simple syrup ready to receive those flavor extracts. So my ratios thus far have been one to one with my allulose and my water, tiny pinch of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of that acacia fiber just to sort of help thicken it up a little bit without losing too much of the volume of my water when creating my simple syrup. I have split that volume in half and the extract measurements I'm about to give you are in fact for half. The recipe so if you are making just one flavor double the volume of the extracts that i'm about to give you first i would like to make the amaretto syrup amaretto is a combination of almond and vanilla i will be using half a tablespoon of the almond extract almond is one of those extracts that is extremely powerful and you don't want to just eyeball that particular extract for my vanilla, I will be adding, oh, I need the one teaspoon, where are you? For my vanilla, I will be adding one teaspoon to my mixture for a full batch. Obviously, that would be two teaspoons. Normally with vanilla, you measure with your heart. However, we don't want the vanilla to supersede the almond. And I do want to add, Another two pinches of salt. Oh my goodness, this smells so amaretto-y. It's delightful. I have a little jar that I'm going to store my syrup in. This is a seven ounce little jar. I've used this a few other times on my channel. I really love these jars. They're the right size for a variety of things and they are perfect for this syrup recipe. One thing you want to make sure to do is actually label your jars so as to not confuse one syrup with another. I'm gonna go rinse this little fella out because the amount of the almond extract is a little bit high. Now that I have all of that sort of rinsed out, I'm going to add the remaining volume of my simple syrup. And it is time to make some sugar cookie flavor happen. For my sugar cookie syrup, I am going to have a higher volume of vanilla, which I am quickly running out of. I'm gonna have to pull a new bottle here shortly. We also need some butter extract. I have the Watkins brand. There is also Olive Nation that I have. I love the Olive Nation brand of extracts, but because I still have this one, I'm gonna use this one first. And for this, I'm going to use a quarter teaspoon it try not to knock the things over and spill them and then 
another couple pinches of real salt and then stir it up lovely another jar jar the color of each of these syrups is extremely similar so you do want to make sure to label them I find using permanent marker on glass works really really well okay we've got a mess I'm gonna clean up this mess and then we'll talk to make the sugar cookie steamer I will take a mug here I guess it's a coffee cup and I'm going to fill it with about a cup of almond milk use coconut milk if you're allergic to almond milk or whichever milk alternative you prefer I'm also going to add a splash of heavy cream for richness and then I've got the little instant milk frother but you could also do this easily on a stove top and I'm going to pour in a wee splash of my sugar cookie syrup probably a tablespoon or so adjust it to your sweetness preferences and then I've got a few different options here I can do cold I can do a light foam a heavy foam or I can just heat I'm gonna go ahead and just heat the milk and the syrup so after a couple of minutes it will automatically shut off I have some steam rising here I'm going to pour a majority of this back into my mug but I'm gonna leave a tiny bit. I'm going to add some more cream and allow that to become a foamy layer on top. Auto shut off and I've got some foam. Then I thought I could top it off with a small bit of cinnamon. And here is my sugar cookie steamer. You can see a little bit of that foam there. You could also top this with some whipped cream, um, you know, some sprinkles perhaps. Those super fat, colorful sprinkles would be cute on some like whipped cream. Mmm. Well, that's just cozy in a cup right there. Oh, that instant thing gets it hot. Whew. I went all the way down to my guts. <sighs> that is just delightful. I think we're ready for a tiramisu latte. I have in my latte mug here two ounces of very strongly brewed coffee. Feel free to use a single shot of espresso if you have the means to make that. Let me set that back there and pray I don't knock it over. Next. Uh, I'm going to be using my instant frother again. This is so handy to me. I know it's not something everybody wants. Stovetop is an option. I'm going to take three quarters of a cup of my milk alternative. I'm using almond milk. Feel free to use coconut milk if that is what your preference is. Next up, I'm going to take one tablespoon of my cocoa powder add that in it is going to not mix too well to begin with but everything will come together I'm going to add two tablespoons of my heavy cream and then I have that amaretto syrup I'm going to add one tablespoon of my amaretto syrup Traditional tiramisu will use mascarpone cheese. I don't have any right now, but I'm going to use a tablespoon of cream cheese knowing that it will not be authentic, but also knowing that it will still probably taste delicious. I'm gonna let this run for one full cycle. All right, this guy has stayed safe behind my reach, and I have frothed 
milk alternative to add. I'm gonna see if I, you know, I need a spoon, spoon, spoon. All right, I'm gonna hold back the foam. I cannot do latte art. So don't hold out any high hopes. So I also have a little bit of some instant coffee that I can kind of sprinkle over the top. It's a little bit not pretty, but it'll work. And here is my tiramisu latte. This one looks quite pretty in my mug here. And like I said, mascarpone would be the appropriate cheese to put in a tiramisu, but some days you just work with what you got. Mm. Wow, that's rich. I love it. Oh my goodness, so good. You can customize the tiramisu latte or that sugar cookie steamer to your own tastes. Use more syrup, use less syrup. Add that whipped cream if you want something decadent. Either way, both of these recipes are delightful and this will sort of tide my husband over until I can make some actual tiramisu for him. I hope that you will make these recipes for simple syrups to keep on hand and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope to see you in my next video. have to move you to a new spot. Oh yeah. I'm gonna need to move all of those spare lights. Ah.